Praise the Lord. Our message this morning is titled, The Truth About God's Law. The Truth About God's Law. On last week, we talked about how the law of God has always been the law of love. Law was written after man's transgression. In other words, when sin came into the world, when, men, when God's people began to live in sin, God gave Moses what? the law. Yes. In other words, he wrote it so that they can remember it, so that they can keep it in their minds. But as we know, Man cannot keep law but just because he's reminded of it. Amen? Amen. You don't keep law just because he's reminded of it. It has to be in your heart. Amen. You got to want to do it from your heart. I gave everybody, uh, uh, hopefully if everyone had one, a study sheet that I put together. And I'm going to start reading from the very beginning of it. It says, God's law from the very beginning of creation has always been the law of love. Amen. Being that we are made in his image, his law has always been in our nature, in our consciousness. See, the law is in your conscience. Yes. What I mean by that, the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 2 that man can keep God's law by nature. Mm -hmm. We're made in his image, so he, ha he has placed within us the consciousness of his law. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. We all know that when we are born into this world, our parents don't have to teach us that it's wrong to steal. Mm -hmm. It's in our nature. Amen. Our parents don't have to tell us is wrong to lie, Amen. right? right. Yeah. To kill. Mm -hmm. It's in our nature. But once we begin to break these laws, then our parents has to what? Remind us. Mm -hmm. I gave you an example last week how if a child is disobedient to his parents, the parents will give them more law. This is why Israel received the ceremonial law it's because of their transgression. They were disobedient, so God gave them more law. The only law we needed from the very beginning was the law of love. Mm -hmm. But because of disobedience, God had to lay it down to Moses and put the, every law together. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not worship any graven image. Thou shalt not take the Lord's God's thy name in vain. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother that your days may be long upon the earth. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Mm -hmm. Those are the Ten Commandments. He had to set it in order and he had to lay it down to Moses because the people would not obey they wouldn't obey. That's why they re needed written law. But as we see here, it says, therefore the commandments are fulfilled in the law of love. The law never needed to be written as a reminder to God's people. That's right. It never needed to be written. As I said last week, he didn't write it to Abraham. <laughs> he didn't write it to Noah. He told Noah, he said, you are a perfect and upright man. Yeah. And, you, and you don't read one verse where he gave Noah law. Why? Because the law was in his heart. Yeah. He was obedient and he loved God from his heart. Yeah. It is people who break the law that need it to be written so they can be reminded. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Let us go 
to this verse. Y'all, that, 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 that uh, study guide is for you. I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm, I might go a different route. But let us go to this verse in John chapter 17. Uh, 1 verse 17. I want y'all to hear this verse. Praise God. And, we're gonna, and everything we say this morning is going to be centered around this verse. But we're going to be all over the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Read the verse 117. John 117. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given to Moses. As I said, it was given because the people were disobedient. Yes. People who are disobedient, they're the ones that need law. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. When someone is walking on the street and they commit a crime and the police is looking for them, once the police find them, he handcuffs them, right? Uh -huh. That's bondage. Oh, yeah. He places them in the back seat of the car. Now you're in bondage. Why? Because you broke the law. Yeah. And then you go before the judge and the judge give you a sentence no matter what it is. Then you go on the prison bars. Now you sit behind prison. Let's say you got caught stealing. Now you're in prison. Guess what's in prison? A bunch of law. A bunch of rules. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't go outside. See, you see, see when you break the law, you get more law. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you break the law, more law is placed on you because law is bondage. Yes, it is. Law is bondage. Because guess what? When you haven't broken the law, <laughs> you ain't worried about no police. It's the truth. <laughs> I can see the blue lights all day long. I ain't done nothing wrong. Don't bother me. <laughs> People who hate the police. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Came by Jesus Christ. Yes. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at here, Moses received law because of transgression. The people broke the law. So God gave them ceremonial law. He said he gave them a whole bunch of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And here the word says. The law was given to Moses because of transgression, but grace and truth came through who? Jesus. Came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. So what we're seeing here, grace and truth replace the law. Amen. That's what you see there. Grace and truth, it replaced the law. Why did it replace the law? Because nobody, I mean nobody, can keep the deeds of the law and be justified before God. Let me give you an example. If a person is out breaking the law, he's trying his best to keep the law, he's trying to keep the Sabbath, trying to do all these things, that cannot justify you. The only thing that can justify you before God is love. Hallelujah. That's the only thing that can justify you. You see, because people can strive to keep the law and still not have love. Oh, that's right. Amen. You got a lot of folk who keep the Sabbath, but they don't have love. You got a lot of people that keep the law, but they don't have love. That's why you're not justified by the deeds of the law. Amen. The only thing that can justify you is love. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to this pamphlet. Mm -hmm. Now, go to page two. 
Hallelujah. Now, I'll go back to page one. I'm going to go down to the, la- uh, to the next to the last paragraph where it says, in the beginning. Uh-huh. You see it? Yeah. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, he made man in his own image and in his lo- likeness. He wanted mankind to reflect his character. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Yeah. According to 1 John 4, 7, 8, the character of God is what? Love. Love. Look at what the verse says. Beloved, let us what? Love, love one another. For love is what? Hmm. And everyone that loveth is what? How about that? Thank you, Lord. And knoweth God. Mm-hmm. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Y'all see that? Yeah. So it's not about keeping laws and commandments. It's about loving Jesus, God. thank you. Hallelujah. God is. And the scripture also said, how can a man say he loved God and do not love his neighbor? Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Read, uh, listen at the next part. In creation, God placed a tree in the midst of the garden. Yes, and he said that man should not eat of it. Uh-huh. Why did he do that? The reason for the tree and, it, and its forbidden fruit was so that man may be subject to the law of love. See, God wanted man to love him. He loved. He deserves to be loved. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wanted man to freely and willingly choose to obey him from his heart. That's right. As a matter of fact, God never wanted any of us as his children to be subject to written law. It has always been his will that we love being obedient to him from our heart. Mm-hmm. This is the law of love, obedience from the heart. Our awesome creator really preferred that our life of obedience and service to him be totally through love. That's right. Without a bunch of rules and commands. You see, if you have to command somebody to do something, you can't make them love you. You might be able to make them do what you want them to do, but you can't make them love you. That's right. <laughs> That's why commandments... And laws, you cannot be justified by. Because you can do what's in the law and still not have love in your heart. Amen. Huh? Praise the Lord. Listen at this. Without a bunch of rules and commands, God does everything out of what? Love, and he expects us to be a reflection, a a reflection of his love. All right? Listen to what the verse says. The law of love, John 13 and 34. What do it say? The law of love. Amen. John 13 and 34. Read it, Sherry. All right. A new commandment. Listen, listen. I in what? A new commandment. You see, God got rid of the old one. Yeah. Now Christ brought a what? A, a new, new one. one. He said a new commandment. Mm. What? Read it. I give unto you. See, read, read, read. That ye love one another. Come on now, y'all hear this? And I have asked, I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Stop, stop. Mm -hmm. You see, a what? A new commandment. Somebody say new. New. So if we got a new one, then we can get rid of the old one. Hey, thank you. See, a lot of folks say, oh, the commandments ain't done one away with. That's what Jesus said. He said, a new commandment I give unto you. Thank that you love one another. Thank you, Jesus. You see, if you love one another, you, ain't, you can't help but keep the ten. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why he said, all ten are fulfilled in these two. Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and might. And he said, the second one is just as good. Thank you, Lord. Love your neighbor as you do right. yourself. That's what the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus. These are the great two Thank commandments. You. This is what it's all about. This is the truth. Yeah. He said, the law was given to Moses, but grace and uh, truth. Uh, truth is the new law. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gracious. Truth 
fits a new law. But let's talk about grace. Let's talk about, because he said grace and what? Mercy. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. That replaced the law. Let's talk about grace. Look at the picture on page number three. Look at the picture. Hallelujah. Look at the picture on page three. You see what it says? Old age of law. It is what? Come on, somebody. Jesus. Glorious. And if you look in the middle of the picture, it'll tell you how it was finished. You see, Christ on the what? Wow. Cross. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Stop right there for a minute. Go to your Bibles. Stop right there for a minute. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Go to Galatians chapter 3, somebody. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Amen. To verse number 13. It's on, it's on the same page there, number 7. y'all to go back up. Maybe we're going to have to read this then. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all can see what sin is. Sherry, I want you to read right up, on, right up under here where it says grace. Start right there and read. Cause I want to know what sin is. You need to know what sin is. Breaking the law. You see it right there? Therefore, we are all well. Uh, now read it, read it, Sherry. So, so you can get it. So you can get it. What verse now? No, it, it, this on the on the on the page, oh. right under where it says grace. Okay. Let yeah. me. I, I read it. Then. Oh, well, good. I'm not sure why you. Can. There is no greater law. You see it under the picture. Yeah, I see it. There is no greater law than the law of love. There's no greater law than the law of love. Read. Love replaced the law of Moses. Love replaced the law of Moses. When we look at this picture, we will see the most powerful expression known to man. Love. Love. You see the picture? It took love to do that. Don't y'all see it? Amen. It took love. Mm -hmm. Genuine love. Real love. Mm -hmm. Not great love. Mm -hmm. It took love for Christ to do that. That's right. Read, read, read. It. No wonder the law was finished on the cross. Read. Love is so much powerful than the law. Come on now. The law condemns us as sinners. You see, the law condemns us as sinners. Why? Read. Therefore, we all are worthy of death. You see that? We are all worthy of death because we have all broke the law. The Bible said there's none righteous, not one. Everybody needs Christ. Yes. Everybody needs to Everybody. Everybody needs to be delivered from the law. Yes. This is why he died on the cross. Yes. So you too can be delivered from the curse of the law. Thank you. Because the law brought a curse. The law said you are worthy of death. Yes. Read it. First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Y'all see that? So that's what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. Disobeying the law. Mm -hmm. That's what sin is. And when you see the written law, the written law condemns you. It tells you you're condemned because you're guilty of breaking the law. But look, somebody took your place. Y'all look at the picture again. Yeah. Somebody took Thank your you. place. That's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it is. Grace took my place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank I God. deserve to die for grace. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. He came and died in my place. Grace. 
grace is God's unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. That's what they say God grace is, right? Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hallelujah. Yes. So down. But read down here where it says grace. Grace is not only an expression of God's love, mm -hmm. it is also an expression of love that we should have for one another. That's the truth. Right. You see, when you say grace is God's unmerited favor, you are applying grace to only to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we are meant to have grace toward one another. Thank you. <laughs> love and grace go together. You can't separate it. Because what is grace? Read what I got behind you. What it say? Grace is. Grace is not only an expression of God's love. It's an expression of love, and we should have for one, for one another. Grace is an expression of love that we should have. Now look at where it says. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna let you read the whole thing. Start where it says. Now look at the picture again. Start right there. Read. So I want us to get what grace is. Now look. Read it. Okay, I'm going to read it for you. Now look at the picture again. What do you see? It is God's grace. Amen. The church, it calls God's grace unmerited favor. I like this definition, but it, is progr it programs us into believing that grace only comes from God. Mm -hmm. But I like another definition that comes from the English dictionary. A little better. Grace is the act. Y'all hear it? Of goodwill and favor toward another. Mm -hmm. That's what grace is. The act of goodwill and favor toward another. In other words, treating people like you want to be treated. Amen. Showing love toward people. That's what grace is. Grace is showing love toward someone else. Mm -hmm. That's what grace is. So just like he extended grace to you, we ought to what? Extend it to one another. This is what he mean by love one another. We ought to give one another grace. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. Yeah. Going back to Galatians. Mm -hmm. Christ was deemed us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. Right? Read, read Galatians 7, verse 13. Read it again. Start there. Galatians 7. Galatians 3. Okay. Verse 13. Sorry. Verse 13. Read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Uh-huh. You see, you see on the cross? He was a curse for us. Read. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Don't you know? The cross is the same thing we use today as the electric chair. Oh, my. Yeah. A person that got to go to the electric chair is cursed. Yeah. Why? Because he's going to die mm -hmm. for breaking the law. Christ didn't break no law. Amen. Y'all hear me? Amen. You did. He took your place. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who could love a Christ like that? <laughs> no greater love than a man will lay down his life oh, yeah. for his brother. Oh, yeah. Huh. And as Christ, he said, as I have loved you, you ought to what? Love one another. He don't mean just going to talk and talk to one another. What he mean, you give up yourself to help somebody else. Yeah. Huh? Do something for somebody else besides yourself all the time. Always think about yourself. He said, deny yourself. Take up your what? Cross. And follow me. me. Uh, Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Read some more of Galatians. For it is written, uh -huh. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You see that? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hmm. Y'all see that? Yeah. Let us go back to John 1 and 17. Grace, faith. Grace and truth, right? Yeah. Amen. Moses was given the law, but grace came through who? Jesus Christ. Grace is extending favor toward another. Mm -hmm. He did it for you. Amen. That is the greatest favor you can ever receive. Yeah. Thank you. A person taking your place when you were supposed to die. Mm -hmm. 
That's grace. Now we ought to have grace toward one another. Amen. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also where? In Christ, in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You ought to be like him, giving grace to somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, right. This is the fulfillment of the law, when you can love one another. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Grace. Grace. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. We're going to grace. God gave us grace. Mm -hmm. And some of us think we can still live like we want to live. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm saved now. Christ died for me. Yeah, he died for me. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Saved from what? Mm -hmm. If you're still in sin, how are you saved? If you're still breaking the law, how are you saved? Tell me. Amen. What does the word saved mean? Mm. It means rescued, delivered. Yeah. 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 Oh, glory. Mm. That's what it means. Yeah. What you been delivered from <laughs> if you're still in sin? The Bible says in Matthews chapter 1, <laughs> a, a son is born, mm. and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Yeah. And he shall save his people yeah. from their sin. Amen. If you're still in sin, how are you going to say you saved? Amen, Jesus. Sin is transgressing the law. Mm. Not the law, not the Ten Commandments law. Don't you get that out of your mind? The law of love. Love, no, amen. That's your problem. Get rid of the Ten Commandments law in your mind. Because if you've been wrong, Steal from your neighbor. Amen. You ain't gonna kill your neighbor. That's right. You ain't gonna commit adultery on your wife. No. You ain't gonna do this stuff. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, read verse 1. Verse 1. What shall I say then? What shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we what? Continue in sin. Mm -hmm. Read. Grace may abound. Shall we continue in sin just because we have grace? Yeah. And grace is there for us whenever we need it. Mm. That's what that means. You have grace whenever you need it. So shall we continue to sin so we can depend on grace? That's just like a person saying, I'm going to go ahead and sin. I'm going to go ahead and do this because I got grace. That is about crazy as I don't know what. What kind of fool was, 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 was tip God like that? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Grace didn't come to give you permission to sin. It came to save you from sin. Amen. God forbid. God what? Forbid. Read. How shall we uh -huh. that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Y'all hear? How? You see, mm -hmm. when you were delivered from the yeah, curse of the law, yeah. you became dead yeah. to sin because you have love yeah. in your heart ah. for one another. Thank you. And when you can love one another, you will fulfill the law no doubt about it. Just be love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Love. That's all you need. Right. And truth is the new law in your heart. Yeah. Christ said, um, if you love me, I do what? If you love me, you do, you'll do what? <laughs> if you love me, you'll do what? You will keep my commandments. A lot, a lot of people read that verse, but they don't read the next verse. <laughs> if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. But guess what the next verse say? Then I will pray to the Father, then he will give you a call. Yeah, you is. see, you can't get the Holy Ghost until you have some love in your heart. All right, now. Oh, how can the Holy Ghost dwell in an unclean temple? How can the Holy Ghost dwell in a person that don't have love?
Go to chapter 7, Romans. Man, I feel the spirit of God. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Come on, say hallelujah. This is going to blow your mind here. Chapter 7, Romans came to me. It's not in my notes, but it's, but it's going to blow your mind. Yes. You see, we were once married to the law. Yeah. Why were we married to the law? Oh, yeah. Why were we bound by the law? Oh, Let me talk about marriage for a minute. Marriage is when a wife is bound by the law of her husband. She's bound to her, her husband. Why? Because the Bible says, wives obey your husband. All right? Yeah. You're bound. You're bound to him. Read the scripture. This is it. It's on that one. Bible talk. Let the Bible talk. Yeah, yeah. Verse 1. Verse 1. Read. Know ye not, brethren. Know ye not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. Stop. Paul is saying, I speak to them that know the law. Everybody that can brag about the Ten Commandments. I know the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. What good is it knowing them and don't live them? Amen. Seven day Adventist. Oh, we keep the Sabbath. Mm. We go to church on a Saturday. Y'all go on a Sunday. We better than y'all. <laughs> they don't actually say that. They mean that. Because they say you ain't saved. Amen. But they is because they keep the Sabbath. Hallelujah. They still married to the law. Yes. They're still bound by the law. Yes. Law is bondage. Yes. I just told you the example of a prisoner. When you break the law, the police take you into bondage, yes. in prison. Yes, law keeps you in prison. Mm -hmm. Law delivers you from prison. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because what if? What if the judge Go back and you're sitting in the prison while you done killed somebody, gave you 15 years, then you get a retrial. Mm -mm. And the judge say, you're free to go. That's grace, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He delivered you. What did it take in order for the judge to do that? Love. Mm -hmm. He had to care about you. Y'all hear me? Amen. He had to care about you to do that. Read the verse. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. See, what the Bible is saying here, if you know the law, then you are bound by the law. Uh -huh. It has power over you as long as you live, as long as you know it. And as long as you say, I got to keep the law, then you're bound by the law. That's right. Read that. Start up again. Read it. Know ye not, brethren, uh -huh. for I speak to them that know the law. Them that know the law? Mm-hmm. How that the law hath dominion See, over See, dominion you. means it has power over you. Yes. Amen. The law has power. Since you know the law, now the law got power over you. Uh -huh. So read. Uh, uh, hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. As long as you live, and you don't, go to, and you don't accept the law of love, you don't accept Christ, but you want to be bound by tradition and by a lot of rules and regulations, then you're bound. Yeah. You're bound by that. That imprisons you. In prison, they eat when, they, when they, eat. they have a certain time to eat. They have a certain time to sleep. They have a certain time to go outside. They have a law, nothing but law, all over the prison. Oh, yeah. I ain't never been to prison, but I know that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. And a person that is bound by law, on the outside, he's in prison too. Yes. <laughs> but read what the word says. Keep reading. For the woman which hath an husband is... Now he's going to use a wife and a husband as an example mm -hmm. of law. Read. Listen the, to it very carefully. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. She's free. See, a woman is bound by the law of her husband as long as he's living. Yeah. You hear that? But if the husband be dead, then she's free. Yeah. See, Paul's giving you an example of people being bound to the husband called law. Read, read the next verse you see. So then if. So I, then if. While her husband liveth, uh -huh. she be married to another man. 
She be married to another man what? She shall be called an adulteress. So if you still married to the law and you can't keep it, you are an adulteress. That's what that's saying. Mm -hmm. If you know the law, you're bound to the law. The law is your husband. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't get delivered from the law, your husband is alive. But if your husband be dead, But if you try to, y'all hear me, y'all get it? Yeah. But if you want to be married to somebody else while you're still under the law, then you're an adulteress. If you're still breaking the law, you're an adulteress. You're an adulteress. Read what the word says. Read. Okay, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. I want you to go back and read that because you skipped something. Amen, I sure did. <laughs> so then if. <laughs> All right. While her husband liveth. While her husband liveth. She be married to another man. Uh-huh. She shall be called an adulteress. I just explained it. She's but, called an adulteress. Mm -hmm. But. But if her husband be dead. That's the part you missed. But if he be dead. She is free from the law. She is free from what? The law. Of her husband, right? Read. So that she is no adulteress. Y'all see that? The now, now the next verse is going to get sum it all up. So y'all know what Paul is trying to tell you here. Read the next verse. Wherefore, Wherefore my, my brethren, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. By you, see, now he used the wife for the husband. Like my brother, you become what? Dead to the law. Dead to the law. By the body. By the what? By the body of Christ. Christ killed the law. He killed the law. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he killed it. Mm -hmm. Read that part again. I want y'all to get it. Wherefore, Wherefore, my brother, my brother, ye also are become dead to the you law. You are dead to the law. By the body of by Christ. By the body of Christ. That ye should be married to that another. That ye should be what? Married to another. Who is that another? Jesus. You see, the law is dead. You should be married to Christ now. Yeah. That's what the word is telling you. Y'all see it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many clothes? Read, 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 read my part. Read. Even to him... Who is raised from the dead. Y'all hear that? That's who you should be married to now. Not the law. Him who was raised from the dead. And he gave you a new law. Yes, he, he said did. love one another as I have loved you. That's his law. You should be married to him now. So you should be keeping his law. Yeah. yeah. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. See that's the only way you can bring fruit unto God. You can't bring fruit unto God by keeping the law. Amen. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Well, I love this. Mm -hmm. I'm the close. I, I want to keep going, but I got to stop. Mm -hmm. You notice here, God used the marriage as an example. Yes. Marriage is the perfect example of love. I'll say that again. Marriage is the perfect example of love. Amen. This is why the homosexuals want to contaminate the holy matrimony of marriage between a man and a woman. Mm. They want to destroy. They want to destroy God's only way for man to show love. Mm. Because he marries a woman they be fruitful and they multiply and have children and he is an example of God. Yes. God is the father, mm -hmm. the church is the wife, mm -hmm. and the, we are the children. Mm -hmm. So a man marries a wife and, and we are what? A family. Mm -hmm. A family is a body of love. Yes, it is. But we don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have the family anymore. Satan is destroying the family because that's the only thing that exemplifies love. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting rid of it. Yeah. Everybody now is being born out of wedlock. Mm. Husbands can't keep their wives. Mm hmm. hmm. Y'all hear me? Amen. Can't get along. Mm. Divorcing one another. Mm. Why do you think the Bible talks about marriage so much? Marriage is a perfect example of love. Yes, it is. Let me show you what I mean. 
With, when a person gets married, just before he gets married, they have what we call a marriage ceremony. Y'all yeah. hear that? Amen. They have a marriage ceremony. And within this ceremony, you have laws, mm -hmm. you have rules, you have tradition, do's and don'ts. Because with, when you look at the ceremony, you must have a license. Mm -hmm. The minister signs a license. All these laws within the ceremony. Are y'all listening to me? The husband, the man, he's finna marry his wife. He's standing at the altar. That's tradition. And the bride comes down the aisle. They rolls out the white carpet for her. That's tradition. Most marriages do this. Why? Because this rule, it's law, it's tradition. And then when the wife gets her, who give this woman to be? And then you go through all this process of tradition. This is what Moses had, tradition. He had a ceremony. Y'all yeah. listening to me? Yeah. He has a ceremony, tradition. And when the woman gets to the altar, who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. Amen. But the most, now listen, the most important part of the ceremony is the vows. Do you promise to take this woman for better or worse, sickness and health, rich or poor, unto death do us poor. Ain't that how our relationship with Christ ought to be? I love him to death. I love him to death do me poor. For better or worse, if I'm sick, if I'm in hell, I'm still going to love him. Y'all see how the marriage is? Oh, yeah, we do, yeah, we do, yeah, we do. You see how the marriage? Yeah. It's compatible to your relationship with Christ? Ain't uh -huh. that how he loved you? For better or worse? Yes. Sickness and health to death did it pause. Jesus. That's how much he loved you. Yes, Lord. Yes. He loved you to death. Yes. This is why he said husband. He said a, a husband ought to give himself. Yes. Love your wives as much as you do what? Yes. Yourself. Amen. You are an example of God. The Bible says God is the head of the man yeah. and man is the head of the heart, the woman. Oh, man. Yeah. He's trying to show man he ought to be like God, but not man will obey better man. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but this is what's going to bring Christ back. Oh, yes, it is. This stuff you see going on now is going to bring him back. I can't wait. Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm ready. A lot of people can't say that. But I'm going to talk about the vows. Just one moment here. The vows is just like the Ten Commandments. You see, when you can obey those vows, see, once you get to the altar, and once you say those vows, the ceremony is over. The law is gone. The, the vows is nothing but law. Now, you got to walk through that altar, and you got to leave that church, and now you got to have those vows in your heart. Yes, yes, yes. You hear me today? Yes. You got to have them in your heart now. Your heart. This is where it's at. This is what it's all about. Do you have love in your heart? Yes. Amen, Jesus. That's what it's all about now. Mm -hmm. This is the same application to you in Christ. When you leave the law, when you leave the tradition, when you leave the ceremonies, mm. don't they still have them in church? Yeah. Oh, when you go to church, they still got tradition. You got to pay your tithe. You got to do this. You got to come to church. You yeah. all this law. We don't need no law. Yeah. All we need is love. Love. And you can't love one another. Bunch of rules and still can't love one another. Right. Looking at one another, jealous and, and envy and all that stuff yeah. still in their hearts. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me this yeah. morning. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got to stop. Yeah. God bless y'all and may God keep you. you I hope I have said something uh, to help you, you to know yeah. that it's all about love. love. Amen. That is the greatest commandment of the law. Mm -hmm. It is now, has always been. The law of Moses came because of transgression. Yes. Ooh, I, I, I got so much scripture I want to read, but I just don't have the time. Yeah. 
God bless you. you May God keep you. I don't want you to just hear me. Don't just be hearers of the word. But be doers. Don't just hear it. Oh, you show pre. No, 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 that ain't important. Mm -mm. Obey me, says the Lord. You got to do it. It is not the hearers of the word that is justified before God, but the doers of the word. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.